This video is brought to you by BTI Institute, a New Jersey leader in certification-based management training. There's no agenda. Why? Because this is a lean coffee. This is the collective wisdom and insights and instincts and intuition of the audience and what members want to talk about and bring to the table. Very quickly, we have a visual board with you have to do, which are topics to discuss, in progress, things that we're talking about, blocked or paused and done. And it's kind of like if you ever go to a mechanic and you're greeted by someone, hey, why are you here? Take some basic information, puts it on a board, puts it behind him till a mechanic comes in and he takes a look at the board, says, okay, this is an oil chain or something else, goes back in, does some work, come back and just puts it one row over. Or at least that's what I've seen at the Midas that I go to. So very interactive and very visual. So for example, and it's drag and drop. Add registered members to the Trello board. This is something that I was doing, and I'm simply going to click and drag to done. And I'd also just done some reminders. So I'm going to click, drag, and move it to done. That's how simple it is. This is a free application that can also be used for retrospectives or planning a vacation or interacting with teams that are not necessarily co located. We have some member instructions. So for those who did get in, you could click on this card. And here are a few things that you could have done. And we understand some people are shy and they may not have done this. That's totally fine. You can add some things under the to do column by clicking on the plus add another card. You can add a checklist if you want to get to another level of granular detail. And I recommend uh, three. And then you can also vote on an item saying, hey, you know, I kind of like this topic and I want to uh, talk about this a little bit more, which is a little bit down on the right here. So if I could observe next, let's see what's on this board. I've been talking about some instructions, so that's in progress. And ever once in a while, I'm going to still come back to it. So I'm going to just leave it there. <clears throat> we have some people who have added cards here. Now, Henry had sent me something by email because he couldn't get in, but eventually he did. How can we go or how can we get experience as a Scrum Master after we get our CSM when most employers want someone who was already experienced? Here's a topic, and it's got one like or a vote by somebody, and there are a few others here. Again, on certifications mostly, and something on budgets to uh, getting an SPC class or DevOps. And what I would encourage you to do for those who are on the board and have access, if you'd like, go in, click on a card, and just vote for one or two that you like. And it'll just tell me which one of these topics are more popular or the ones people want to talk to. If you were doing this in person, I could do something called dot voting where you just give a writing instrument and people can color in a dot or if you have stickers with a budget, you can give people a few stickers and do so. So if you're up to it and you can go in, just click on a topic that you think is of more interest to you and hit the vote button. So I'm gonna just give you maybe a minute or two minutes to do that. And also, while that's happening, um, if you have any questions about what I have described or if I could elaborate, I can certainly do that now as well. You'd probably have to unmute yourself and remute yourself or just type in something in the chat window that Bob is monitoring. Hi, Nitin. This is Tara McFarland. I have never been in this application before, so do I need to pull up Trello? or Because I'm working with my um, cursor, and I don't seem to be able to do any of the things you mentioned. Oh, shoot. Ditto on that question. This is Tim Lee. 
Nitin, I think you're muted. We can't hear you anymore. Thank you. I thought it was me. <laughs> By the way, this is John C. Just want to make a quick statement. Again, you know, you're encouraged to, if you're going to speak, to turn on your camera. You don't have to, but it'll make it a little bit more homey if you, if you can, so we can see who's asking the question. Thank sure. I, um, again, first time using Zoom. So yeah. I, on, on, on the bottom left should be a control for saying uh, start or stop video. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you have it. Oh. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Tim, we know you. Don't be shy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so do I need to launch the Trello app or? Uh, you should you should be in Trello. You should have received an invitation from Nitin. If you if you gave him your email, you would have gotten invited. And then if wow. you were to click on that link from Nitin, you would actually have access to this. That, that the way Trello, Trello is a Atlas in product as well. And it's uh, they they okay. recently bought it, maybe I'd say probably around a year or so ago. Don't quote me on the date. Uh, and so the way you control it is you can have a board and then basically just invite people uh, that you want access to it. Did everyone who had registered for this meeting, was everyone invited or was yes, there a separate? Nitin sent emails asking huh. everybody to. Uh, yeah. yeah, I had not received that. So I'm going to yes. register now. Yeah, so if you could, if you want, just type in your email address at the chat window and uh, we'll send you a link. Or oh, Henry sent it uh, right there in case you can access it from there. And if you're having any kind of technical issues, you can just call it out or type in a topic here and I'd be more than happy to just add in a card for you. Uh, this is a sign on screen, right? So I have to sign up or log in. Sign up. If you've never done this before, it'll probably be a sign up to the Trello board. <coughs> and when was the email sent? I'm sorry, because I didn't get, I'm, I'm looking, but I don't see anything from Nitin. Uh, sometime yesterday, yesterday morning or afternoon. Okay, I, the person that put their email in the chat, I will copy it and invite you. Okay, uh, I'll let you do that. I'll do Sue Ann. Sorry, the link that's in the chat window does not seem to be working. It says board not found, and I did sign up for an account. I'll put my email in the chat as well. Okay, let's do that. Okay, where's the chat? I see John's. I'll invite John. Yeah, I double check my email. I never received anything either. Um, so I just send them my email as well. Yes, please do. In the registration, um, that may have been buried in the email to send me an email requesting access. So if that didn't happen, no problem. We will add you. And hey, this is actually a good thing. I'm assuming you can still all see my screen because very quickly it just demonstrates how easy it is to add people. I'm going to add Tim. Did you, you add a John? Did you already add Tim? Nitin? No, go ahead and add Tim. I'll add Scott. And again, I hover over the invite button and I put in just a simple copy and paste and hit the send invitation. And hey, guess what? While this is happening, I just added a new card here, which is in progress. Add new members to the Trello board. This is identifying work that is emerging or is in progress. And it's very similar to what some software development teams do. They're in the middle of something and there's something that wasn't recorded or captured or emerged and they just put in a card. So it's all learning experience. 
even the technical difficulties and snafus over here. <laughs> Very true. Uh, can you add me too, please? My email address is Sunil here, sbuby at gmail.com. If you could put your email address into the chat, I'll, I'll yeah, take it's it. already there at 6 or 8 p.m. Okay. I think you must serve a safer city as uh, some of these people. All right, I see Sunil. This is Tara. If you could add me as well, I'd appreciate it. That's t.cullenmcfarland at gmail. Ah, oh, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, I thought I did. Might All right, be a bit Bob. Of a, a delay. Right. Yes. You know, we're having storms, so oh, I always yes. find my internet connection isn't so great during the storms. So now what you're learning is when you, if you want to use this with your team, uh, this is what you need to do. Basically, you just need to get the email addresses and, and then Trello will send them an email and then people just need to set, click on the link. I use it with, I volunteer at my church and we, uh, we I run uh, a office support committee and everybody on the committee, we use Trello instead of, instead of email because it gets crazy with all the email flying around. I suspect Adagio was a religion. <laughs> I've been trying to get my pastor to, to turn the, the staff and, you know, to make them an agile team, but he's, he's not quite ready yet. So he kind of just takes small steps. Hmm. Is there a way to, excuse my newbie questions, but is there a way to then have the camera shots of people on the side of the charlo? Like, it seems like when I moved to the actual application, I lost everyone that I saw on the, um, through the session. Try pressing a alt tab till you get the zoom back in. Okay. And see what happens. It's just a hidden thing in the background. Your window might be over it. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. I am seeing some other votes come in. And uh, we do know some people have registered and are logging in, getting a little bit more familiar. In the interest of time, let me start moving this forward just a little bit. So, the philosophy and the idea of this dot voting is some people are a little shy and introverted. So you just want to give a voice to the audience and uh, do it in a somewhat democratic way. Say, hey, go up there and see what's of interest to you. And you don't necessarily have to even speak because some voices get lost and you're not even debating why this topic or the other. Hey, you just get one or two votes depending on what you've decided upon and uh, you take it from there. So for example, now I'm seeing that there are three votes for the first topic, one for the second, there's a two and a one. And I'm simply just gonna scroll a little bit and again, click and drag a few things up and down to see what makes sense. So the first card had four votes, second one had two. And that's kind of a, what if a sequential ordering of things. The last two had none. And what I'd like to do then is start talking about one of these things. So I'm going to click and drag the first topic that was by Henry. How can we get experience as a Scrum Master after we get our CSM, which is a certified Scrum Master through the Scrum Alliance. But most employers want someone who is already experienced. That's a great question. And I'm not sure how to answer this and it's gonna be an open forum. And I'll look towards you, Bob, and other CSM holders as well. Um, I would certainly raise my hand within my organization and let people know, firstly, of the credentials. I would look internally for any postings. Um, now, if you're in the market, it's certainly going to be a little bit more difficult because 
irrespective of whether you have any other formal certifications, if you can demonstrate or say you have some experience, that always gives the candidate a little bit of an edge. Um, I would try to look for uh, nonprofit organizations or volunteer. Hey, somebody, one of these lean coffee said uh, he uses this at a church. So maybe if there's a scrummy opportunity there, you could raise your hand and say, hey, could I be like a scrum master for a couple of weeks and just see how this is? Um, or perhaps pick up uh, something at a entry level or beginner level at a contract. But those are just some of my thoughts. And uh, Bob, how about you? How have you tackled this in your team or group or your experience? What, what my approach might be is there's sometimes they advertise agile project manager jobs or agile program manager jobs. And what that would do is get your foot in the door because, you know, assuming you have your PMP and you're, you know, you're a project manager, you would definitely be able to meet that component. The next thing would be you'd show them your certifications that you have. And then you'd be able to demonstrate to them, you, you know, that you understand what Scrum is and how you'd be able to bridge uh, the PMO to the Scrum teams that are working. That, that's an approach. I recently worked with a friend who actually got placed at a bank and I was coaching him and I recommended that he go for his CSM. He was a BA. He was actually hired as a business analyst. And as soon as the company found out that he got his CSM, he, he went off and did this on his own. Uh, they put him in as a scrum master. Uh, so it, it basically, it's a matter of where you are as far as the opportunities being opened. It, I, I thought that was pretty cool because it was like, you know, I was telling him like, you know, that would be a really good credential a BA should have. And it was like within a month, he was like, he was, he was in the spot. And I, I've been helping him ever since. And there's people out there that can help you, you know, because when you're first getting started, uh, it's a little scary. It's a little confusing, but that, yet that's what this whole community is all about. Does anybody else have any comments or ideas? Yeah, and we can all participate in this. I think your point about uh, trying to volunteer at a nonprofit is a good one. I'm actually starting a group for people that are working and looking for work. And um, you know, for both those two camps, and I fashioned it after Scrum. So it's interesting. I'm having discussions with people that are interested in the group. And, <laughs> you know, a lot of them think that because I mentioned Scrum, it's a technical thing. And I said, no, it's just fashioned after Scrum. And ones that don't know about Scrum and didn't hear me mention about Scrum are trying to figure out how this thing works, you know. <laughs> so it's a lot of interesting conversations. Yes, indeed. And sometimes uh, uh, it can be a little in intimidating for people to hear a lot of this formal jargon and things that they're not familiar with. So if you can use plain layman terms, it's a little easier to grasp as well. So Will and I had a great conversation a couple of days ago about this as well. I think you're heading in the right track and doing some good service giving back to the community at the same time. So knitting. Hi, Tim. The, yeah, the uh, so this board that you're showing here is a uh, it's um uh, is a Kanban board. It would would that be classified as a Kanban board? Yes, that's correct. That's because we have a certain state of flow going from point A to point B. However, we define it. It's typically the to do, in progress, and done. And I just like to add a, another swim lane called blocked or paused. Yeah, so, so but the, the um, when you talk about uh, like Scrum, could, could we use this tool uh, for Scrum board? Or is it? We uh, could, and some people have. It would look a little different where you would have um, some more details behind the card. Um, such as an acceptance criteria, you'd get a, a, be able to see who's assigned to this or who's a volunteer for this. You'd have to have some add-ons such as uh, your points or your values. So some teams have used this as well. Um, I 
think Scrum is a, a tad bit heavy for a virtual lean coffee. That's why I didn't really set it up that way. But certainly, yes, a lot of teams use this for scrummy things, and it's possible. Uh, and very quickly, I could uh, just add another list. Just to give you an example, I did this once for um, a new team starting off where I just created a lane saying ready for product owner because sometimes a product owner wanted to just look at things before moving it to done during the sprint review. And these are things that the developers said, you know what, I'm done with this piece of development work and let me just move it down and let the product owner eyeball it. And it was just very interactive and collaborative at the same time. So that's just another example. I'm going to archive this list. Like if you're using it in a company, like mm -hmm. Jira is much better set up for actually managing it in, you know, with a scrum team. But like Nitin's mm -hmm. saying, you could make this work, but it, I don't think it's really designed for that. That's, that's, that, that's just Bob's mm -hmm. impression. Yeah, but, and I agree. Trello has a few add-ons that help make it scrummy, but there are other tools that I would recommend, including Jira rather than Trello. This 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 board in itself, Kanban, is it, used to um, I guess facilitate conversation, conversations, um, and, and thoughts that are going on within a, a context of a of a meeting, if you will. Is that right? It it helps you keep track. Yes, of course. It certainly keeps things a little bit more focused. And the one thing I didn't mention at the beginning is usually when we pick a topic or card. We kind of time box it to so five minutes, seven minutes, 10 minutes in a conversation. And uh, we're nearing that mark. And that just then gives people an opportunity to say, hey, should we table this for another time or have we got enough where we can move it to block or revisit or done? And then we just move on to something else. So it certainly keeps things more focused. So if you notice again, I've been dragging and dropping the cards over and my bucket here under in progress is also reducing. And if I say, hey, I'm gonna have the audience hold off questions. So that's just a temporary block or a pause. And I can just go back to discussing just the topic of Scrum Mastering and picking up that experience again. And I can drag this back here if I wanted to so say it's open for questions. So very interactive and certainly, as you said, it keeps things focused. So let me ask uh, the audience right now, is there anything else you'd like to talk about this before I reach out to Henry and say, hey, Henry, can we call this like a, a dumb thumbs up? Or if there's an interest, we can revisit it at a later time before we moving, move on to other topics. What do you say, Henry, as you raise this topic? Well, if nobody else, trying to get myself off mute, if nobody else has any comments on it, I would say we can close that, put it in the done column. Okay, going once, going twice, going thrice. Ta-da! I use uh, Trello for my personal keeping track of all the work that I have to do as well, so I'm very familiar with the tool. It's great. That's great, and if there is time right at the end, if people want to see my personal life on a Trello board, I can certainly show that to you. So if the government agencies ever came knocking or hacktivists came and says, Mr. Khanna, where were you two weeks ago or where were you two years ago? You could pretty much look into my Trello board and get a good sense of some patterns and vacations and academia and work and so on. So that, I'm a bit of a nutcase as well. Yeah, uh, actually, let's let's talk about that for a second because actually that was the thing that I, I thought about adding to the conversation was that um, feel free to, you know if you're thinking about um, your experience doing um, doing Scrum if you actually do your personal life things in your personal life as a Scrum that counts um, and especially if you can show it if you can demonstrate it so you know people talked about doing this for their church. Um, you can also do it in your personal life. It, it does lend itself. I do scrums every day, daily, for myself, which is weird. But yeah, those, those kinds of things can, be, can, can count as well. 
Yeah, actually, Mike makes a good point. There, there's a there's a gentleman named Dave Pryor that we actually, for our chapter, has taught um, ACP prep and CSM for us before. And uh, if you look for him, his name Pryor, P, spelled like the word Pryor, P-R-I-O-R. Uh, he he's a big champion of uh, what's referred to as personal kanban. So like everything, and he he's taught his family and his kids to use the kanban board, like what what chores need to be done and things like that, and to move them and and so forth. So if you want to get into that practice personally. Um, that's something you can do, to, which is basically just like what Mike said, use, use it for your personal things. Yeah, indeed. It's, yeah. it's very personable and yeah. it's very happening and it's very simple. Glad yeah. to know I'm not alone in this. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, according to Dave Pryor, is that uh, the kids actually get into it. They like to see that what tasks they have to do, what chores they have to do, and they like moving it on the columns. So if you have young children, uh, I think older children might not fall for that, <laughs> but you have young children, uh, they, they might enjoy, oh, I got that task over, I get to move it to the done column and so forth, so. Can you, uh, can you customize this to uh, uh, show like uh, uh, dates or dates and times when things were done or when they have to be done? Yeah, you have a due date and so on. Let's say there's set the reminders, uh, time, let's say 7 p.m save and it's got a little color coding thing with the May 29. There you go. Awesome. So okay in the interest of time I'm moving to the next topic. Again from Henry. This might be very quick. Who handles watching the budget on a scrum team? Ooh. Any I ideas have. or thoughts? I have. I do. It's like being a foreigner in a project. <laughs> It's, and it's, could you tell us your role on the Scrum team? Were you on the Scrum team or an outsider? Uh, Were you product owner, Scrum master, Dev team? So it's very strange where uh, where project managers end up in Scrum environments. It's it it, it seems to be an attachment. Um, it, it seems to be an appendage of some kind or another. Um, so I was basically tasked for handling the budget for a fairly large um, a large endeavor. Um, which had a lot of uncertainty in it um, and a lot of change, you know, daily changes. So um, I was not really part of the scrum team. I was not really allowed to talk in the scrum team unless I was talking on behalf of other people who gave me their updates. Um, it was very strange, but you know, I had to keep my ear to the ground every day and I had to think about a thousand different variables um, that could change um, daily depending upon uh, what a self-directed team decided to do. Um, so it's a really good question. I don't think there is a very good answer as to really who does it. It doesn't seem to be codified into the system, in my opinion. So I think there is an answer to this. And the answer is very simple, but the reality sometimes shakes people. It's the product owner who overlooks the budget because the product owner is the single ringable neck as Ken Schreiber put, who is responsible for that. the increment. Good luck with that. Yeah, so, so yeah, my job like I think, I was to actually wrangle product owners. That might, might be an accurate description of what really happened. What? And I can talk a little bit from personal experience as a former product owner. Uh, I didn't have such a problem with this because somebody had pre-allocated budget for a year and said, go forth and do whatever work you can do from this dev team. Take a look at the pipeline, and I was like, oh, okay. I don't have to struggle about money issues. This is what it is. That's the reality. That's what we were told, and that's it. But uh, Scrum is very clear. It's the product owner who's accountable for um, the business value in the stream. Now, it's not to say there aren't any organizations that don't have project managers in the periphery and so on. Um, and certainly I'll take all the luck you can offer me at any time, <laughs> but Bob, go ahead. I know you've got a story or two. Oh uh, yeah. I've, I've worked with product owners where I offer to help them, uh, because some, my role as a coach scrum master on a team and I'll say, Hey, if you need help with the budget, let me know. And, uh, nine times out of 10, they, I end up helping with the budget because I really understand how it all works. But Nitin's totally correct. It's ultimately the responsibility falls on the product owner, but it's often delegated to other people. And anybody else have any other thoughts, comments, or have they seen anything about that? 
Um, yeah, I actually, I think it, it begs some really interesting questions that might be for for different, um, you know, for for different uh, different a uh, different day or something like that. But what kind of what kind of skill sets, what kind of financial uh, acumen do uh, product owners need? Um, so product owners are product owners because they understand um, what the customer is looking for. Um, but they aren't necessarily the product owner because they have uh, business skills for, such as forecasting and, and whatnot. Um, so what kind of things do people think are needed um, and what kind of roles would project managers, uh, you know, how could perhaps project managers fill those roles? So I don't necessarily agree that they may not have all the skill sets needed. I certainly agree that some don't. No, 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 no. I'm, I, just, I'm asking for an identification of what you think they are. Many do. Uh, I, I think you need to be able to play with money a little bit and have some uh, financial knowledge. So know how to calculate velocity, know how to make a forecast based on your velocity, um, have historic data. If you have, um, if you're entering a new initiative or a new program or the time for renewals are there, um, I would say understand that there's a different forecasting model altogether and be able to explain that to your stakeholders or to whoever you're asking for money. I don't think it necessarily has to be uh, very much uh, a lot of heavy lifting with, with the money, but certainly if you are interviewing someone and say, hey, given that I have a backlog, could you tell me when all of my features or when this would be consumed? And also given that this team in its entirety or a person in a team costs X amount of dollars, could you tell me how much money you should ask for for a person? It's actually an oversimplification, but it is truly a simple model. That's just my experience. But again, um, every organization sets this up a little differently. And again, Bob and others, I'll lean on you to see what kind of skill sets do you think would be of value for a product owner that you might be interviewing? Uh, you, what I find is they, sometimes the business doesn't put a high enough level person in uh, as the product owner because you need somebody that has the authority to make a decision and have it stick. Uh, the worst thing that could happen to your product owner would be them to make a decision as far as priority and then a couple of days later, later have it overridden by a higher up management. Uh, so those, those are the kinds of things that you really need to be uh, careful about. And they also really need to understand Scrum and how Scrum works. And like Linton was mentioning, they, you do a lot of release planning with them where basically you map out what's gonna be in the release, how long uh, it's gonna take. And that's where you know, the Scrum master or the coach can help the product owner. Uh, what I do when I work with a product owner is I do a lot of training uh, that's more specific toward a product owner and really help get, get them up to speed. And what I find is they really uh, appreciate the training and they, uh, they, they really soak it in and become very powerful product owners ultimately. That, that's, because that's what you want. You want somebody that has the authority. That, that, to me, that is so key. If, if they don't have the authority, uh, you're wasting your time. It's also the hardest job on the Scrum team. Of all the, the developer role, the Scrum master role, you know, there's only three roles. The product owner is the hardest job because they have to make the hard decisions. They have to face the customers when they say, I can't build it in this sprint. You're gonna have to wait a couple of sprints. They have to do all that. And it, it, it's hard. Thanks, Bob. Any other questions on that? I, I'm not sure if I gave a very uh, robust answer, but it's good to have the collective insights and experience of others as well. It, it is a demanding role and uh, budgets or should be part of it. <laughs> yes. Sometimes it's taken away because it's delegated to someone else. But if you can find that PO who can understand the finances as well, that'll be great. Anything else on this uh, topic that we'd like to talk about or add or share? I'm okay with closing it. Move it over to Don. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. We've got a lot done in this sprint here. 
Okay, so let's see what's next. And if you've noticed, I've been moving a few cards up and down here, just depending on the thumbs up. And let's see, what's the next one? How do we get SPC certification from PMI New Jersey? Can we do a similar SAFE class? And it seems that uh, Julia also just asked something about that. So for those of you who may have missed it, uh, PMI New Jersey recently offered um, the SAFE Agilist two-day training. And uh, that is through the Scaled Agile Academy or SAFE. Um, the SPC is the, um, I'm forgetting the acronym, um, Scaled Program Consultant. This is where you can work at a program and portfolio level and work with release teams and get the arts going, the agile release teams. Um, I don't think PMI New Jersey offers this. The SA or Safe Agilist is relatively easier just to offer because you don't need to be a designated professional trainer also. Um, so I had my SBC certification and I could offer a two-day course. Uh, I did not do that. And I would just look at their website to see what is the SBC offering because that is going to be about four days long and it's going to be rigorous. And after that, there is a test and an assessment which you can take at home. Uh, it is time boxed. And um, you could also just maybe reach out to John C to see if there's any collaboration or works coming from there. Otherwise, the um, SA or leading safe, uh, I think uh, it's simpler. It's two days long and that's coming up. I don't know if they're offering anytime soon. Um, Bob, do you know anything about that or John? We just talk about the we just essay? completed a class. Uh, it uh, not it, you know we, within the last month we completed a class, so uh, we mm -hmm. don't know what we're going to have <clears throat> scheduled for next year with regard to safe. And I've probably said this before, so there might be some new people on the phone. Is uh, there's so many other agile certifications unless your company is doing safe or unless you really want a job that is advertising for a safe at person, uh, you may want to consider the more basic certifications first, like a CSM or, or a PSM, uh, and then, you know, look at the scaling. You know, again, this is just Bob's opinion. You know, you could just take that as information. Yeah, let me, uh, this is John, uh, let me just chime in quickly on this one. Um, again, we know that there's a lot of training that uh, our folks want, um, you know, I'll, I'll just say briefly that there, there's only a limited amount of training that we as a chapter can deliver. I mean, we're not a professional training organization. So, uh, you know, we actually dipped our toes into the leading safe. We saw that there's a lot of demand for it and we're very happy about that. And so we'll, we'll look forward to delivering more training like that in the future. But uh, just as Bob said too, we, we think that there's probably more demand for the more basic training as opposed to F SPC training, which is a very uh, much higher level training. So we're not sure if there's enough demand for that. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're looking for SPC training, I would direct you to PMI New Jersey's website. Uh, some of our uh, sponsors uh, offer SPC training. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you, you can consider them. Yeah, thank you for chiming in. Um, uh, and agree with Bob as well. Start off small, start off light. And just to let you know, the Scale Agile Academy, and here's their website, is a different certifying body from PMI. So I think your local chapter is doing well in trying to have some sort of a partnership with the trainers and see if you can get you discounts. But you can always take these courses by looking over here directly, just as you can go to the Scrum Alliance website or scrum.org uh, and consider other things. So I just added this to the back of the card as well. Any other questions on uh, SAFE or SBC certifications? I'm not sure who uh, added this. Let me see if I can get a bit of a history. Activity, show details. Oh, it was Henry again. It's a Henry. Henry seems to be popular. 
Henry could run for an elected official and get a lot of uh, thumbs up or votes. I, comment, uh, I did not add it. I only commented oh, on it. Oh, you commented on it. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm not hearing anything much here. Uh, should I move it to done? Any objections from anybody or any other questions? Yeah, Nitin, you can move it. Uh, that was me. I had I had put that question out, Nitin. Okay, there you go. Hey, Thank Harash, you. don't be shy. Thank we know how you look like already. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on your yeah. camera if you can. Yeah, I, I will. I will call <laughs> on. I, I'm just logged in from two places. Uh, because I, I was driving when I was, um, but I'll, I'll turn no, on. The no, no. I mean, if, if you yeah. can't, if you can't, you can't. You know. Yeah. yeah no, I'll, yeah. I'll turn on. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Same thing for you too, Mike. No, no, no need to be shy. We're all friends here. <laughs> all righty. So the next question is on the requirements for PMI ACP. Uh, I took this. Oh God, around 2012. I was probably the seventh one in the state of New Jersey who got this. Um, so the exam has probably evolved and the requirements, um, but it's all over here if you go to their website. Uh, let's see, the prerequisites, 2,000 hours of general PM experience, uh, and a current PMP will satisfy that, 1,500 hours working on an agile project, and 21 contact hours of training. Uh, a lot of people do the two-day CSM and one day online or do a, a three-day straight uh, ACP course. Uh, BTII, I think, is a partner with the local chapter that's offering that. Um, so I think given the question here, if you take these two courses and are certified, your contact hours will exceed 21 hours. You just have to look at the real world experience then, which is over here. My personal experience was I found it really hard to justify the um, the the agile experience, having come from mostly a waterfall background, but the rest of it was was pretty easy to to get done. So um, I took all the coursework, but uh, never actually sat for the test because I didn't feel I could justify the experience. Any uh, oh, okay. tips for justifying the experience? I mean, you know, when you when you justify your experience for the PMP, it's it's very easy to look at the things you've done in your past, um, and describe them with a with a with a PMP filter. Um, I did not find that easy to do for a, for for Agile. It, it either is or it isn't. Uh, to to help with that, if you're working with Scrum teams, then basically, you know, you would that those hours that you're working with the scrum team would account, would align yeah. with the 1500 hours. It could be a Kanban team. It could be any type of agile team. Yeah, uh, I wasn't then. So, okay. you know, subsequently I have, but I had not at that time. And that, 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 I think that's a sleeper credential. I think right now the industry doesn't appreciate it as much as, as it yeah. is, but I think uh, as time goes by, it's going to become more and more valuable because it's one of the very few credentials that actually like this, this is showing 3,500 hours of experience, which is huge. And a lot of the credentials are you take a class and you take a test. So it, it's, I think it's once the industry recognizes it, I think the ACP is going to be one of the leading ones. It, it's not there yet. You know, like the CSM mm -hmm. has that, they have the mind share, but I think eventually uh, things will change. And plus it gives you a very well-rounded agile, it, uh, look, look, you're not just, you know, focusing on scrum. Agreed. So how can you, um, how can you practice with a test? Like, is the test based on some, you know, like the PMP is based on a pin block, right? What is the ACP test based on? Is there a document or? They give you a list of books that you can read. Uh, I, I, part, I, I worked with, uh, there's a website called gr8pm.com and they have a, a book, John Steinbeck has a book that I used to actually study for the ACP and he also has online practice tests. Uh, and what I did is I, I didn't take any formal ACP classes. I just, because I had a lot of other agile training, not, you know, I didn't need anything specific for ACP and uh, I was able to pass out on the first try. Um, I also, I took his course actually. So I, I thought, and, and did his practice tests and everything. And I thought they were very good. 
I, I felt well prepared. And, you know, if you've taken the PMP test, it's nowhere near as exhausting as because if this one's only three hours, the PMP is like five. Uh, you're still in a testing center, but it's not anywhere near as brutal as the PMP. I, okay. Uh, I'm sorry, go uh, on. Yeah, hey, uh, Sunil here. So, uh, preparing for my PMI ACP, I had taken a Udemy course. It cost me about $20. And it had given me everything. Now, can you speak up? It's really hard to hear you. Uh, uh, can you hear me better now? Oh, uh, much better. Okay, maybe my headphones, they are not that good. Uh, so I had taken a course on Udemy and it cost me about $20, if I remember correctly. And uh, it gave me all the credentials, oh, sorry, all the 21, I think it gave me 24 uh, 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 contact hours. Plus, uh, it had some practice tests also, a lot of questions along with that in that course itself. And I think it took me about uh, 15 to 20 days to prepare for the test and then go in and pass the test. But of course, I had the Agile experience behind me, and that was, I think, 2016 or so, some three years ago. So two or three years ago. So, so there are cheaper options available. I also scoured the internet and came up with the, uh, there were questions, etc., posted on various uh, forums. So I went in and took a look at them also. From PMI, I could not, find anything specific other than the books. So probably that is what makes it more difficult to uh, pass the PMI ACP if you don't really have that experience. So, so Nathan, if you could open that card for the PMI ACP and show the person who's speaking, if you can just add a note with that information, if you scroll down, uh, you, can, you can just basically add a comment and then save it. And then that, that would be something that anybody would be able to go into after this meeting. Okay, uh, let me do that, Nathan. Oh, sorry. All right, this is a John C. Uh, let, let me just add to, and uh, is that, uh, you know, Bob and I are currently working on actually bringing a PMI ACP prep course to the chapter. Uh, if it comes to fruition, our plan is to have it in the fall. It'll probably be either sometime in the October or November time frame. So I would, if you're interested in taking a PMI ACP exam prep course, uh, I would uh, take a look for that at the, uh, at, at the PMINJ.org website. Uh, the other thing too is that there was a question about, uh, is there any resources to study for the PMI ACP? Obviously, I think you all know that there is now an, uh, there is a, an agile standard that actually, if you order the printed copy of the PMBOK, it comes with the agile practice guide. So. Uh, that's definitely something that if you're looking to, to take the uh, PMI ACP exam, uh, that uh, you should definitely become familiar with. Yeah, all good discussion. So let me also chime in. Um, given that there is an extensive repository of books, before you buy a single one, try agileexams.com. Not only will it give you uh, some sample questions for free, but at the end, it'll tell you where the questions came from and which book. So take a few of these, even if you have to pay for this for a couple of months, do a few of these sessions and say, hey, you know what? This one book keeps popping up or these two books, instead of reading all 12 or 14 or 15, let me just go buy all these two books and see how I do. So that's what helped me. Uh, that was agileexams.com. They got a few sample questions and very reasonable as well. So plenty of information online and plenty of support. Uh, you just have to figure out what works with your schedule, your budget, what people are saying, what resonates. And uh, I've added a few things behind this card as well. Hey, Nitin, Nit can I add to the conversation? Is, has, anybody, yeah, has anybody looked into, uh, heard about the uh, CS, uh, SMC? Uh, could you give me the acronym? Some yes, please stay away from that. Um, okay. That causes heartbreak and concern to me. That's another organization that unfortunately um, 
had the acronym so similar, but they dilute Scrum. They do not have the backing of any of the signatories from the Agile Manifesto. And I would um, really interview a candidate from there with some caution and ask some simple fundamental question to see how they play. Um, because the Scrum Bach, as they had created, um, is really not Scrum. And it dilutes the Scrum Guide as altered by Jeff Sutherland. So please stay away from that. If you do come across candidates, uh, again, just to be fair, it's okay to have that conversation, but just know their understanding of Scrum and their formal training is very different than what's being offered in the industry and what's been established as credible uh, training by either the Scrum Alliance or Scrum.org. Thank you. And then Nitin, we have eight minutes. Yeah, so very quickly, uh, we've got some other topics. Shall we move this to Don or do you wanna keep talking about this? Okay, going I once. I moving it to Don. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Next I'm one happy. should be easy. <laughs> um, and again, I think Bob can stay on a little later. I will leave at seven. Um, but you, you have a, a good community here nonetheless. Next topic. What are the going rates for Scrum Masters in the New Jersey market? Oh, this depresses me. I used to, for fun, just interview and ask recruiters. Unfortunately, I have more recruiters reaching out than actual HR personnel to see what it is that they're offering. And they're offering anything from garbage to pennies to peanuts. And the expression is you offer peanuts, you get monkeys. And I think I'm a little bit more evolved than that, but um, I hear and see things anything from $50 an hour to 60 to 90 to 100 to 120 and going up above. Um, this is assuming direct clients for contractual things. Um, a lot of recruiters, unfortunately, are just not even familiar with the alphabet soup because it is an alphabet soup. Um, I've had recruiters offer some older acronyms and certifications, uh, and I had to educate them. Um, but it really varies. And unfortunately, the pay scales, in my opinion, hasn't been that great as, as where it should be. Um, but anybody else have any experience and are comfortable sharing numbers? Uh, feel free. Bob, what are you offering me if I come work for you? <laughs> uh I don't have any rates to quote specifically, but I'd say if you just look across the industry on average, I'd say it's probably around 140K. You know, that's around $70 an hour. Uh, but again, it really all depends on your experience. If, you're, if you have one year experience, if you have seven years experience, that uh, I've seen companies actually start calling out senior scrum masters. And a lot of times when you read the job rack, they'll be looking for a coach, not, not just a scrum master, because they, they'll put in the job description, they want somebody to be able to train, mentor, uh, and, work, and work with the teams. And really a, a scrum master is just their, their job as a facilitator. They don't do the other things, but uh, that's, that's just something that I, I've noticed. Uh, if you wanna make more money, the, uh, unfortunately you have to be called a coach. Coaches do get paid more but uh, that's pretty much what I've been seeing. Yep, thank you for that. Anybody else have any other experience or numbers they're comfortable sharing? Otherwise we can move this to Don. It's, it's gonna be very quick. All right. I have so seen numbers. I have seen num I have seen numbers from sixty-five to eighty-five Nathan and Bob, but nothing nothing beyond that. Uh, assuming there are two or three layers to the end client, so that's 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 the reason the rate goes down uh, as an end number to you. Right. Yep. I've seen that as well. So what's that? One thirty to one seventy. Okay. Yes, yes, I yes. Got, well, uh, yeah. I think I have a recruiter just today asking if I was available for Scrum Master. 
and they said they can offer 165k with some flexibility. So that would be their top thing. Um, so that's just what I got. Oh, sorry, 145k, 165k. I was actually yeah, offered. I would, uh... Go ahead, Bob. I was offered a job at RTP, and they. It, the job sounded good and they were looking for more than a, a scrum master and they, they said the best they could do is 100. I was like, okay, sorry, we're way off. <laughs> yep. All righty. So in the interest of time again, let me just move it away to the dawn. I'm going to take a momentary pause. Um, hey, Bob, can I give you sharing and yes. you can facilitate because we're going to... I'm going to sneak out soon, so I'm going to just do a stop share. And I'll slowly blend into the background. And hopefully, Bob, you'll be able to start sharing. But hopefully, this give you gave you a flavor of the lean coffee. We didn't have any planned agenda. Um, audience participation is encouraged. And um, we still have this Trello board. Once you leave, you can uh, get the resources and play around with it and just play with Trello. So over to Bob, and in case you don't hear from me, have a good evening. Thanks, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you. Thanks, Nathan. All right, well, part of being agile is you always finish on time and we have two minutes. Is there any question that somebody would like to have answered in two minutes? Because I don't know if there's any more time to go through the board. Uh, I could just answer real quickly this top card. Uh, that Jeff Sutherland book that we we auctioned out uh, at the uh, May Symposium. Uh, that's uh, doing uh, doing twice the work in half the time. That's a very good book. Uh, this one right here. I don't know if you, can, you guys can see it. This this I, I'd say this is my favorite book right now as far as really getting a good understanding of what's if if you're doing Scrum what what to get a good understanding of Scrum. I don't know if anybody else has any other books that they like. Um, my favorite is the Agile in Three Minutes podcast. That's cool. What was it? Agile uh, what? They, they said Agile in Three Minutes podcast. Uh, if you can put the link in the uh, Kanban board, that would be nice too. Yeah, I like the idea of putting these, I'm trying to fill in comments in some of these things because then we can have this as a knowledge base too. If somebody has a similar question, they can search this and find the answers that we have. Yeah, maybe this is something that our LCI can put, the Agile LCI can start using too. This, you know, we can have the same board and as people join the LCI, they can get access to this board. People could, you know, possibly ask questions. Again, I'm just brainstorming. All right, so uh, we're just about at the top of the hour. And in, since we're agile, the, the session about uh, the lean coffee is you know, formally ending. And as we indicated, you know, I, I could stay on for another 15 minutes if there's any general questions that anybody has. Uh, that, you know, I'd be glad to uh, answer or help, help with. Or everybody, everybody can just go home. It's really up to you. Uh, I'm, I'm available. Uh, so it's this was a kind of different meeting because everybody was getting their questions answered throughout the whole meeting. So I don't, I'm not sure if anybody has anything left. Um, I just got a question. There's some links that I noticed. Uh, um, what's the uh, Asana.com link, Henry? I, Henry, will I think you put that out there, shared with us? Somebody had that in the chat on the side. So like I said, I've been trying to update the comments with this. I mean, oh, okay. update the Trello board with the things that we talked about. Yeah, uh, I, I, I've, I've had some brief experience with Asana. Asana do, also does Kanban board and has a lot of the similar features as Trello. Yeah. But it's, it's nowhere near as popular as Trello though. But it, it has a lot of those features that you can do that you can, you know, basically have these Kanban boards. You can, it's collaborative. You can type notes in it. And, uh, and assign certain uh, like cards to different people. It's a free account, you can create one just to play around yeah. with it.
Yeah, and then I think when you want to get to something that's really fully featured, then then it might cost you something. But yeah, and that's probably. Like,